It's a good attitude. It's a great attitude. If you can hear me, honk your horn. Outstanding. Hopefully we got the bugs all worked out. Oh, is it time? All right, so happy Mother's Day. Who showed up just to see if I would fall off the front of the trailer? <laughs> wow, that makes me feel loved. Oh, wow. No Bible this morning. I uh, have it written down. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Hopefully, hopefully, we've been going through this uh, neighborhood watch series, and so I hope what you've been doing is you've been looking for opportunities to do those good works that God's put in front of you, and not only do you see them, but you step into them, and you really step into them, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later today, but uh, we've got a couple of announcements as we get started. Number one, this is, uh, this is going to be our format for the month of May. We're going to continue to meet out here, um, and uh, short of it raining, then we'll probably go, or yesterday snow. I love North Dakota, by the way. Um, we will <laughs> we'll be meeting here in the parking lot again if you've seen the uh the video on facebook we're not doing that out of fear we're doing that out of courtesy because some of us this really has uh, a pretty dramatic uh impact and some some folks are nervous about it others are not so much but we want to accommodate everyone so we're going to continue to meet and then the church board we will meet back together in the end of the month and we will uh, determine what we're going to do from uh, for the for the first Sunday in June. Second thing, I don't know if everybody's heard because we haven't been able to meet like this for a while. <clears throat> but we are doing a Wednesday night Bible study. We're going over the Book of Mark, and uh, it's online. It's Zoom. If you are interested and would like to to join that um, on our Facebook page, there is the. Uh, ID number and the the password to get in and maybe you're like well I don't know if I can do that because I don't have my computer doesn't work there's a call in number two and, and so if you're not a part of social media but you want to call in you let me know call the office call my cell phone and we will get you uh, involved in that one last thing and this is going to take some orchestrating okay so is everybody listening honk your horn all right here's <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. When we're all done this afternoon, it, it, I say this after. I guess it, it probably will be afternoon. Maybe not two, but when we get done, here's what we're going to do. As I finish praying and as you guys leave, what we're going to do is if there's any cars across the street, we want them to come across the street, pull in. Danny, raise your hand so everybody sees you over there on the corner. He's the first car in the parking lot. We want you to come in and around, and this is going to be everybody wave. Wave, and it's an opportunity for us to see people and say hello and still take the recommendations of the social distancing. So does that make sense? And then Danny's going to start re uh, Mar or Marla and Tim are parked next to Danny, and you guys will just start coming around and then out, and we'll file out that way. So moral of the story is if we do this next week everybody's gonna fight to be Danny so <laughs> so you don't have to be last so does that make sense all right well I'm gonna pray gonna turn it over to uh, the worship team 
and we'll get started. Father God, it is so great to be in your presence this morning. We thank you for the warmth of the sunshine. And so, God, I pray that you will just bless our time together as we, uh, we are here with the express purpose of worshiping you. It's uh, novel. It's kind of fun. But, Jesus, I pray that the trucks and the cars going up and down the, the highway won't be a distraction, that the birds flying won't be a distraction. But, Jesus, we lean into what it is that you have for us today. We love you, and we ask it in your name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully the sound will work out better than it did last time. And I invite you to sing along with us.
prayer this morning. Um, we just want to continue to pray for our leaders, whether it's a, on a national scale or a uh, local scale, just as they're making decisions, trying to discern what is right, what's the next step. Um, just continue to pray for them. And also, uh, we just, uh, we've got lots of folks who are medical things going on right now. And so just continue to pray as they're having tests. And But we have some huge praises as well. Um, Jan Maroney's brother had a heart attack a week and a half or two weeks ago. And he is home and doing well, recovering. Um, I think Wanda's here this morning. I didn't see her in the vehicle, but I think she's here. She's here. And uh, a week ago Friday, she was in Fargo to have a tumor removed from her pituitary gland. And uh, Mark wrote me Sunday when we got, when we were, well, church, I was already done with church, but after the service was over and he was headed to Fargo to pick her up and everything is going well and her eyesight's uh, getting better and, and we just want to praise Jesus and give him all the glory and honor for all of those things. So as we go to prayer, those words that uh, you just sang, that you just heard saying if you weren't singing along, is how much we need him. And uh, let that be our anthem this week. Father God, we thank you again for just the opportunity to be here. God, it is so good to see uh, the faces of folks who I love and care about. And God, some of them, it's been a while. And this morning, Father, we just pray that uh, we know we have folks who aren't here this morning. Some, it's because of health reasons. Some, it's because of uh, they're, they're worried to come out of their house, to be around groups of people. Father, I pray that wherever they find themselves this morning, that they will just know that they are loved and cared for. Father, we, this morning we lift up our leaders. From the president right down to uh, the mayor and the city council of Ellendale, the county commissioners of Dickey County. Father, we pray that you will just give them wisdom and discernment as they um, are discerning what the next steps are. What's, what's next to be open? How does this look? And, and God, we just pray that you will give them guidance as they do that. Father, we praise you for the answers to prayer that we see you doing. God, we, we, were, we thank are grateful for Janet's brother. He's home and, and doing well and recovering. Father, we pray that you'll continue to, uh, to just help him to have a smooth recovery. Father, we praise you for uh, the fact that Wanda's here this morning. God, you are so good. The surgery took a little bit longer, but, but God, it's been successful, and we are praising you for that, and we are grateful. Father, I pray that uh, as people are driving up and down the highway and some of them, God, through your Holy Spirit, I pray will just, their, their curiosity will be peaked just a little bit. What are those people doing in the parking lot on a sunny Sunday morning? That Jesus, they will realize that we are here not out of habit, we are here to worship you, the one true God. So now I pray, Jesus, that as we open up your word in a moment, we will just make much of you. That the words will be not my words, but your words. We love you, Jesus, and we ask it in your name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you very much. Honk for these guys. Give them a thumbs up. Tell them thank you very, very much. Because they have been out here for a long time. I won't say freezing, but they've got to be chilly. So, thank you guys. Appreciate it. How many of you have ever heard the, the saying, uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future? Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I, my high school math teacher loved to say that. Um, he was a former Marine. 
he was a pretty hardcore guy, and he, he was kind of a hard-nosed fella, and he loved to kind of grind that into you. And he's like, P- the people you hang out with are the people that you, you know, that's where you're going to end up. That's what you're going to get. And uh, Mr. Buchholz was, uh, he was just an interesting guy. And I've, I know, because there was a point when the kids were early teenagers that uh, I actually said that to my own kids. And as, I, as, as it came out of my mouth, I realized that I sounded just like him. And I was like, oh, my goodness. It's one thing sounding like your dad, but to sound like your high school math teacher, oh, my goodness. Sorry, Darla. <laughs> oh. But, but this, is, this is something that, as a Jesus follower, that we can kind of all we kind of step into, right? We, we realize that the people that we spend our time with it's kind of the people that we end up looking like. We ended up, as Jesus followers, we have a tendency to hang out with Jesus people, with other church people. Because, well, we don't want people to be a bad influence on us, right? I, I, it's not like I can, you know, do this or hang out there or do this or go there. But the problem is, when we live our lives like that, Jesus asked, in the scripture that I'm going to use this morning, he asked a Pharisee a very pointed question. And that question is, do you see this woman? And see, what happens when we, when we take this saying that my, my high school math teacher was trying to be a really, he was trying to, to kind of impact us and make us understand that who we hung around with had an impact on who we were. He was leaning toward that guilt by association. And sometimes we do that. It's easy for us. Well, we're going to hang out with people who are like us and look like us because, well, we don't want, what would somebody think? And that's what the religious people in, uh, in the day of Jesus, they, they, they just ostracized people who weren't like them. They didn't want anything to do with them. And Jesus is sitting down, and in the scripture that I'm going to read today, he's having this conversation. Jesus was invited to a meal at Simon's house. Luke chapter 7, if you've got your your Bible or you want to open your app. Luke chapter 7. And Jesus is invited to come over for a meal. Simon's a Pharisee, and Jesus wasn't the only person there, and he said, come on over and and so Jesus is, is invited over, and it's a different kind of dinner party than what if I invited you over for supper or if you invited me over for supper, right? Most of the time you would, you would invite me in or I would invite you in. On a nice day, we may sit on the deck for a little while. But then the mosquitoes would come out, and it wouldn't be long, and we'd have to go back inside. But in Jesus' day, what would happen is, instead of usually going inside the house, what they would do is they would go to uh, in the courtyard, and there would be this table sitting uh, kind of low, and they would kind of lean on the table with el- one elbow, and they would ha- their feet kicked out behind them, and they would sit there and have a discussion around this table out in the courtyard. So as people passed by, they could look in and see. You can't hear me. Can. Are you good? I, Becky, you're the only one. You're the only one, Becky. Sorry. Are we good? Thanks, Wayne. All right. <laughs> so, I, I'm lost where I was at. Now. Oh, Jesus, he was reclining at the table. They were sitting there in a group. And what would happen is people would pass by and they could look over through the gate into the garden and see who was sitting there. And you knew that you weren't invited. That is kind of a sad feeling, right? You feel that, I, I, it looked like they're having fun. I, I, I kind of, the food smells amazing. I would like to be invited in. But here sits Jesus and Simon the Pharisee and a a number of other people reclining on the table, eating, having a conversation. And all of a sudden, the gate swings open. 
and she walks in. You know who I'm talking about. We, we have people like this in our community, right? Those people. We've talked about them. And in Luke chapter 7, starting in verse 36, here's the story. It says, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from the city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them with her hair. Then... She saw, or she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, is, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of a woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him a story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the first time she came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said among themselves, Who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these words. Jesus, we thank you for this example. that we see of you taking notice of this woman. You knew that she was a sinful woman. You knew she was immoral. But instead of ostracizing her and treating her like an outcast, Jesus, you spoke love and forgiveness into her life. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Jesus, again, we pray that you will just bless these words, help them to sink in, help us to hear them. We love you, and we ask it in your name. Amen. So there are, there are three people in this, three main people in this passage of Scripture. The first is Jesus. This is the same man who last week, who was, we, we read about Martha and Mary, and Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet, and Martha was running around the house just crazy busy, honored to be there, but she wanted to make sure everything was just right. Everything, all the food had to be done. Remember that. We talked about that. It's the same man. He deserved all of the honor and glory that he could, that, that people could bestow on him because he was, he was performing miracles. He was casting out uh, evil spirits, and he was doing all of these things. And so it was a great honor to have him in your house. People wanted to hang out with Jesus. They were running all over the place going, oh, man, I, I imagine he probably... You know, at this point in his ministry, had all kinds of people. If he had a door, they'd be knocking on it. Or if he had a cell phone, they would have been calling, saying, "Jesus, can you come? You're you're invited anytime. It's an open door policy. Please come on over, hang out with me and my friends. We'd we'd love to hear what you you have to say. We've we've got uh, a friend who needs last, you know, this or that. It's the same Jesus. Everybody was trying to get a piece of him." 
And he decided he was going to accept this invite of a Pharisee. He shows up at the house. And even though he was treated, at least what I understand of should have been customarily, he was treated indifferently. Instead of being treated as, a, as an honored guest, he was just treated like a normal, average, everyday person. Matter of fact, probably he was treated less than what an average guest would have been treated like. But even though he was being what we would consider to be mistreated, Jesus still showed compassion in this situation. The second person in this passage is a sinful woman. A sinful woman. That's code word in the Bible for she was a professional. She was a woman of ill repute. And everybody in town knew what she did. And everybody sitting at the table knew what she did. And they judged her for it. And they ostracized her and they looked down on her. But something in her life had changed. Because all of a sudden, here she comes, crashing the party. And Jesus' feet, remember I said, was out behind him. He was leaning. And this woman... I get this visual picture, and it may be wrong, but this is my imagination... She is bowed down at Jesus' feet and she's sobbing and she's weeping. And I'm not talking about a few tears, right? We, we all shed a few tears. What I think this was, what was happening, I remember when my kids were little, a lot of times they would cry and then there was always the snot and what would happen is eventually they would take their hand and do this and it would like up across their face. It was that kind of a, this woman was broken. She was crying and sobbing. And her feet wet Jesus, or her tears wet Jesus' feet. And she removed her head scarf and she took her hair down and she began to wipe the dirt off of Jesus' feet. This was culturally, it shouldn't have happened. This woman, Jesus should have not let, him, let her touch him. But instead, he allows her to do this, and then she opens up this, this jar of perfume. A lavish gift, something that was super expensive. And instead of just pouring a few drops on each foot, she douses him. See, I, I, I don't know where this transpired in this story. But what I do know is this lady had had an encounter with Jesus at some other time. She had heard him speak. Maybe she had seen him heal someone. But it had impacted her greatly. To the point of bringing a great sacrifice. To the point of breaking her. Maybe he had engaged her in conversation. I, I, I'm, I don't know. When other people would turn away and not even make eye contact with her. She knew there was something different. But ultimately, this woman, because of her, her faith and this way she, she was broken in front of Jesus, he forgave her of her sins. And then there's Simon, a rather lackluster host, right? He should have taken care of Jesus. He should have, you've got this dignitary 
this rabbi in your home. But instead of even bringing him a bowl to allow him to wash his feet, he just leaves Jesus' feet. Remember, they wore sandals, and they didn't have pavement. It was dirty and dusty. And he left Jesus' feet dirty. He didn't greet Jesus with a kiss, which was customary in that day. He didn't give Jesus a towel and let him wipe off his face and apply some olive oil so that, you know, he would have a nice shine instead of being dirty and weather-checked. And when we, this sinful woman crashes she has the audacity to crash his party he looks down at her he judges her he's harsh in his mind to her and that's the amazing thing as we read the gospels is so often jesus knows what you're thinking and he knows what Simon Simon is thinking and he calls him on it ouch don't you hate that right you make a judgment call about somebody you look at them and you look down your nose at them and you think you're better than them and all of a sudden Jesus goes I I, I heard what you said ah I hate that it's so uncomfortable But this passage this morning, this story of Jesus and a sinful woman and Simon, it encompasses each and every person that is here this morning listening, if you're sitting in your car, it it encompasses each and every one of us if we're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Because you see... The amazing part is, all of us, all of us, at some point, was that sinful woman. You say, wait a minute, Kelly, I was never, I, I, I was never a professional. I know, I, I, I didn't, you were a sinner. You were separated from God. And because of the work of Jesus Christ, when you had an encounter with him, you were able to find forgiveness. And see, that's what I, when I said earlier about that idea of guilt by association and it's easy for us. See what happens sometimes, way too often, us as followers of Jesus, what we do is we then begin to distance ourselves from lost and broken people. We don't want to be seen as guilty by association with those people. And the next thing you know, we begin to turn into Simon. And we begin to alienate and ostracize people. But but what if? What if, instead of being like Simon, we were like Jesus? As followers of Jesus, we go, okay, Jesus, we want to be your hands and feet. So whatever I can do to pour into those people's lives, that person's life, put me in place to do that. I'm willing to go and do whatever you want me to do. And maybe you're here this morning or you're listening in and you think, you know what? That's a great story, but... I've done too much. I've gone too far. Jesus can't forgive me. And I'm here to tell you this morning that is a lie of the enemy. He loves you. He died for you. He has the power to forgive you. Don't listen to that lie. So it encompasses each and every one of us. 
So I have a question. What if we embraced making religious people like Simon, what if we embraced making religious people uncomfortable with the amount of time we spent with sinners? What would that look like? What would happen? Instead of worrying about what religious people who were all worried about following the rules we begin to engage those who are lost and broken in our communities and our families. With the hope that we would be able to share the love of Jesus Christ with them. Think of the change, think of the dynamic change in our community. If we began to stop looking at people and quantifying them by their sin, and we began to see them as Jesus seen this woman, as someone who is broken, yes. Jesus said, she's got, she sin, she's got lots of them. But Jesus has forgiveness for those sins. So this week, no matter where you're at today, no matter where you're at, wherever you quantify yourself as, yeah, I want to, I want to be the hands and feet of Jesus. I, I don't want you to be Simon. Repent, say you're sorry, and stop doing that. If that, if you, if that resonates with you, or maybe you resonate with the lady. This week, I just I want you to uh, to step into what it is that God has for you. If that means sharing Jesus with your with your neighbor, share Jesus. If it means cutting the grass for a neighbor or a friend, or taking care of a situation for them, step into it. See it as God providing those opportunities. And don't look at it as, well, they can just do it themselves. They've, they, they can take care of it. And then we make an excuse. But really, a lot of times it's because we look down on them. So I challenge you to be intentional. To make those religious people uncomfortable. Now, I'm not, some of you are going to go, well, that, that means i got to go hang out at the Legion or the Corner Corral, or you can fill in the blank. No. But I'm saying don't throw people away. That's not what Jesus did. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these words. Jesus, again, we thank you for the way you loved people the compassion that you showed. This woman was just something to be used and, and thrown away by society. She had no value. But yet Jesus, when she had an encounter with you, it changed everything. Life was different. And so, Jesus, I pray that those of us who have become your followers and we've been this way for a period of time, sometimes, Jesus, we have a tendency to, to gather in our holy huddles. We have our church friends, and that's who we spend the majority of our time with. Jesus, forgive us. The opportunities, Father, that you give us to speak into the lives of those who are lost and broken, give us those eyes to be able to share your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I thank you again for the opportunity to meet together with my family. It's good to see them. I've missed them greatly. 
as we leave the parking lot today. Jesus, I pray that we will just go out realizing that we are your church. We are your hands and feet. Help us to take that to heart. We love you, Jesus, and we ask it in your name. Amen. All right, so before anybody starts their car and leaves, remember, we're going to do it in an orderly fashion. I don't think we've, do we have anybody across the street, Danny? Did we send anybody? All right, so we're going to start, I, I think, is that Grant and Erica? All right, Grant and Erica, drive through. Did you explain it to him, Danny? And whip around. This is an opportunity for you all to wave and say hello.